Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Y'all, it's your boy Devon Terrell, and welcome to another Help Me Devon plugin review. And today, in this Help Me Devon plugin review, I'll be reviewing Oak Sound Su2, which is a plugin that I feel like is becoming a household name within our engineering community that a lot of us have access to and are using. Now, there's a lot of, or will I say, there is a lack of information on what is actually going on with Oak Sound Su2. I have my own speculations, and I had the pleasure of actually sitting down with some someone at Oak Sound to really explain what is actually happening internally with Suv2. Check this out. I feel like I have to talk to them. Like I have to talk to them. Hey, we're, oh, that's good. So, huge fan, of course. Um, I run a Twitter channel called Help Me Devon. One question I always have for you guys is, basically, we all assume that your plugin is basically like, like some type of multiband that is like a bunch of multibands. Like, what what is the plugin like doing? Like when we have like this kind of thing, like what is it actually doing? Um, so you can actually split up the process into two parts. Uh -huh. You have the um, you have the, uh, analysis. Right. So when you uh, analyze the signal, then you have the processing. Okay. And uh, yeah, one good one thing to notice is that you said multiband. Mm -hmm. There's no mans involved in gotcha. what it's doing. Right. So it's using FFT, so fast Fourier transform okay. uh, technology to analyze the signal, uh, and then that's when. That's where it notices these oscillations, so these resonances right. on that side, right. uh, and uh, targets them, and then it starts to suppress them. Right. And that's on. Then we go over to the processing side, right. which is when you start suppressing right. whatever that analysis uh, has found. That gotcha. yeah. way. So then, so soon when you have it on a track, it's constantly analyzing the signal. Yeah. Right. It's not. It's, it's not there. Kind of like you're not telling it to find it, or right. it's, it's already found everything. Right. So. What you're doing with the processing is just telling it to how much you want it to process. Right. But yeah, so those are uh, completely separate, uh, separate uh, things. Right. The analysis and the processing. Gotcha. Wow. Okay. That's great. Cool. Because that, we've always assumed that it was always like, like we always go to just multiband, like yeah. and thinking yeah. that it's just compressing every nuance. But you, you explaining that it's actually analyzing the entire signal and then just taking it from there is makes it a lot of sense. But wow. huge fancy of plug-in, man. Uh, love into death, and thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for coming yeah. by. So all this time, I thought that Suv2 was really this uh, this mess of multi-band compressors uh, that they figured out how to create. You know, uh, for the most part, not such a heavy CPU usage, and it was just basically a threshold kind of. Uh, multi-band compressor kind of thing going on. And I'm super wrong. What he's saying is it's actually just detecting resonance. So it's literally analyzing every sound uniquely as it comes in, and it's finding resonances in each, uh, in the entire spectrum of the sound, and just attacking those resonances, and, or waiting for the information from you to basically say, what do you want me to do with this? So there's two sides. There's the detection or the analysis side, which is basically looking at the entire sound and saying, here's all the resonances in this sound. And then there's the actual processing side, which is when you're attenuating those sounds and stuff like that. So let's do a deep dive with this new information that we have about it and see if this helps you understand Sue to even better or for you to pick it up for yourself finally. Let's check it out. Okay, so right now I have it in flat start. Uh, I'll play you the vocal that I'm gonna use. It's one of my own songs. Listen closely to the vocal. Oh baby, I'ma pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. So I hear some sibilance, I hear a little bit of harshness, I hear a few things, obviously, that I know for sure Sue 2 can really, really attack and help me out with. So let's get right to it. So what I'll do is I'll go knob for knob. So before I even do that, let me just put on some of the processing and let you get an idea of what it sounds like when it is actually active. So check this out. I'm gonna move this depth knob, which this depth knob is basically telling the plugin how much processing you actually want. So remember, when it comes to Sue 2, it's detecting resonance and it's basically attenuating that resonance or cutting that resonance. Basically, it's bringing that resonance down, which always made me think it was a multiband, but it's not, we know this now. So let's find those resonances and let's bring some of those resonance frequencies down. Oh baby, I'ma pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. So right there off rip, I could tell that it got rid of some of those S's and T's. It even got rid of some of that uh, more boxy frequency and stuff like that on the bottom hand. This is just me doing it really quick just to show you and then I'm gonna get more in depth with the plugin. So basically, let's go for the knobs. 
With the depth knob, like I told you, this is saying how much processing do you want me to um, uh, attack the signal or how much processing do you want in a signal? Let me do a hard right and let me do a hard left and you can get an idea of what this depth knob is actually doing. So hard left first and then I'll gradually go up. Oh baby, I'ma pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Cause I'm no good, I'm impatient, I'm the type of- So basically you can hear when I have it cranked fully to the right, it is doing a lot of processing and cutting. When I have it to the left, it's doing less or none as far as processing to the signal. Got it? Simple enough. Next thing I want you guys to look at is this right here, soft and hard. The soft preset basically uh, has a different algorithm from the hard. The soft sounds more transparent. As you can see, you can even read there, it tells you. has uh, It just sounds a lot more transparent. It sounds smoother. It actually sounds a little bit more natural to me. As opposed to the hard, it feels very aggressive and you could tell that it's there. Let's crank this all the way this way. We'll do soft first and then we'll switch to hard. Oh baby, I'ma pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Now, if you have ears, you heard that difference. Obviously, when it's on soft, it's softer. It's less processing. And when it's on hard, it is extreme. It is a lot more uh, going on as opposed to soft. Super self-explanatory. I think you can kind of get the idea of it. Can you find a use for that? Absolutely. I promise you can find a use for that in certain circumstances. But for now, I am a big fan and proponent uh, of, the, of soft, straight up. Cool. So let's back off a little bit. Next thing I want to show you is the attack. Now, this is what always made me feel like this plugin was a multiband because it had attack, attack and release. So basically it's saying, well, how quickly do you want me to process or attenuate those resonant frequencies? And how quickly do you want me to release those resonant frequencies? Like a compressor. That's why I always thought it was a multiband compressor kind of thing. So I'm going to show you what it sounds like. If I have it to the left, this is the fastest attack, meaning this is immediately attacking those resonant frequencies. Listen close. Oh, baby, I'm a pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Cause I'm no good, I'm impatient, I'm the type of. That's bad with relationships. So like a compressor, when you are attacking those transients really quickly, you're really taking those transients away and basically it's sounding softer because you're attacking those transients really fast as opposed to slowing down the release and letting a little bit of that kind of punch through. So it's the same kind of concept when it comes to uh, attacking those resonant frequencies. A faster attack will attack the resonant frequencies or processing faster. A slower attack will allow some of that transient information to cut through. You saw I found a little sweet spot, like right there is enough where it's getting some of those transient information, but at the same time, it's letting enough through that still feels uh, uh, really nice on my ears and stuff like that. There you go. With the release knob, it is very similar in a sense of it's saying, well, how long do you want me to hold this processing? So on the left-hand side is fast, meaning I want you to immediately, quickly release the processing. And when it's all the way to the right, it's saying I am going to hold this processing of this attenuation on these resonant frequencies for a much longer period. So let's go to fast first and then transition to slow. Oh, baby, I'm a pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Cause I'm no good. I'm impatient. I'm the so when you listen to that, you notice that the dynamics is uh, g very drastically changed. What do I mean when I say dynamics? I'm saying the difference between the quietest sound and the loudest sound isn't much if you're holding the compression. Basically, you're creating like this, excuse me, it's not a compressor. Basically, you're holding that process process of it holding it down. So it's flattening basically the difference between quiet and loud. It's making it like this. I'm just gonna stay right here as opposed to giving you some dynamics, which this is what you want. You want a nice difference between that quiet and that loud. Only reason is because it just sounds more musical. It sounds more dynamic. It's more pleasing to your ear in a lot of circumstances. Sometimes that might not be what you're going for. But if you do a slower release, you're gonna hold the processing longer. If you do a faster release, it's gonna release that processing a lot quicker. Cool. 
The next thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the sharpness. Now, sharpness is pretty, pretty cut and dry. Basically, I want you to think of sharpness like a Q control, which they even put here. And when I say Q control, I'm saying it like a band, the Q on a band. So you know how you have a multi-band compressor. Once again, this is why I always thought it was a multi-band where you say, okay, I'm at 300 hertz right here. And you say, hmm, this is 300 hertz. I'm being real surgical. Let's open the Q up. Now I'm kind of affecting 200 hertz and I'm affecting 600 hertz because I'm opening up the Q. So that's basically what this uh, sharpness knob is doing. It's saying, well, how much around me do you want me to affect? The more narrow it is, it's like, okay, I'm going to try to focus in on that that, that center frequency that you have me at as opposed to what's around me on that frequency spectrum. Let me show you what I mean. So let's turn the sharpness all the way down and then I'll crank it up and you'll see that the bands or excuse me, the resonance that it's attacking gets narrower and narrower as I make it to the right. Oh baby, I'ma pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Cause I'm no good, I'm impatient. So you see, as I had the sharpness to the left, it is uh, more uh, wider as far as its selection. And then when you see I have it cranked, the sharpness cranked to the right, it's making more narrow, narrow, narrow um, uh, cues or bands uh, for it to attack those resonances. And this can be helpful uh, if you're basically just trying to be a little bit more surgical about what you're taking out as opposed to being so broad. Maybe you're like, hey, it's in that 300 hertz range, but I don't want you to just gulp out 300, 500, and 200. I really want just kind of the focus in on that frequency range. Hit up, hit 300, hit 450, hit 200, real, real small and fine. Style, this is a style choice. This is something that you can kind of experiment with and figure out for yourself, but at least you know what it's actually doing. The next thing is, is this selectivity, uh, excuse me, this select, yes, yeah, selectivity knob. And basically, to me, what this knob is basically doing is it's how it chooses what frequencies it wants to attenuate. So it's kind of like if you have it more to the, let's see, if you have it more to the right, it, focus more, it focuses more on narrower content. Let me just show you an idea of what it's doing. Oh, baby, I'm going to pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Cause I'm no good, I'm impatient. So even when I have it, or when I have it cranked to the right, you're seeing it's doing less. It's kind of focusing on more narrower information. It's kind of picking and choosing its its resonant frequencies that it wants to attenuate, and it's much, much smaller, finer uh, selections. As opposed to when I put it to the left, it's basically doing more broader uh, sweeps as far as what it's selecting for the frequency. Don't get too tied up on it. Find your spot that feels good and go with it. But at least you kind of understand or know a little bit what it's doing. Okay. The very last thing that I really want to show you, and I'll just run through two things right quick that is kind of self-explanatory. If you want a higher quality sound out of this plugin, you can go to oversampling and crank it, and you can go to resolution and crank it. If you don't understand what that does as far as oversampling and resolution, I really recommend you just do a little deep dive on the internet to get a better idea. For right now, I just want to focus on the other stuff in this plugin because we can get really deep on oversampling and resolution. Just know the higher those things are, the higher quality of, of a sound you're going to have. Some people will argue with me with that, but just know that's that's what that is basically doing. It can put a crap load of CPU usage on you. So I don't, I don't recommend you just doing that out of the blue. Experiment with that a little bit before you dive into it. Do some reading, do some research. Okay. We have the mix knob, which I just want you to understand that this is allowing you to say, hey, what is my balance of the original with the wet or the process sound so you can back off on how much of this processing you have within what you created. Then the trim knob is basically saying, turn it up or turn it down. Because obviously if you're cutting frequencies, you may feel like you lost a little bit of volume in your sound. So you may want to bring that back up. That's what that trim knob is gonna allow you to do. All right. This is probably the most important thing and I think the most overlooked thing and the most confusing thing that people are encounter within Sue 2. And it's these little bubbles or dots right here. Kind of looks like an EQ. In a nutshell, what these little dots are doing, 
when you turn them or push them up, you're increasing the sensitivity of that specific region. What I'm saying is this, it's already doing processing as it's flat, as you see, it's already, it's flat. Look at it again, it's flat. It's already doing processing if I turn up the depth knob. But if I take one of the dots and I crank it up, now it's going to add more processing and it's going to be more sensitive to this region. Let me show you what I mean. Pay attention to the S's and T's and which we all know or we should know is in like that four kilohertz, five kilohertz range with siblings. Watch this. Oh baby, I'ma pray for you, pray for you, pray for you, pray for you. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Cause I'm no good, I'm impatient. I'm the type of that's bad with relationships. One false move and I'm out this you think I'm the piece, but I just don't So fit. as you can see, when I crank that specific region up, you saw more processing occur within that spot. So this is very helpful when, say, for instance, you're trying to crank some of that stuff in um, as far as the uh, finding the resonant frequencies and attenuating it, but you wanted to focus on a specific band. Like you're like, I really want to just attack the siblings as opposed to... Um, everything equally. I really want to tap that similar. So you can just put more of an emphasis on what frequency ranges uh, you want to. Granted, if you do it the opposite way, it puts less of an emphasis on that particular frequency range. So if you say, listen, I really just want to attack those S's and T's, you can go to the bottom end, throw, uh, uh, throw it all the way down on the bottom end, and it will basically be less sensitive to that frequency range and leave it alone. That's basically what that is. And that took me a while to realize, like, what is these little EQ bubbles kind of doing? So I hope that that was helpful. Of course, I can show you a few more things in here, but I just wanted to give you a general overview of a few questions that I had and just get a deeper understanding of what this thing does. It does some cool things with mid-side and stuff like that, but you can experiment with that on your own. I hope that that was helpful. Uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Help Me Devon at Help Me Devon. Make sure you visit helpmedevon.com for some of our presets, vocal chains, and a bunch of goodies to keep this channel going and supporting it. Also, make sure you visit our Discord community with a bunch of aspiring engineers like yourself. I hope that that was helpful. Please make sure you comment what other plugins you want me to review. And um, until next time, you guys.